Uh, first, uh, thank you all very much for taking the time to be here this morning. Uh, to John Mack, I can't tell you how excited I am that he is uh, joining the team as both an economic advisor to the State of New York and to uh, the Empire State Development Corporation. Um, I know, I've watched John for many, many years. I've watched him as governor. I've watched him as a New Yorker. Uh, I was the attorney general before I was the governor, as many of the people in this room know. Not from any personal experience, mind you, but... Um, and I've, I've watched the business community through uh, all of those capacities, and uh, John Mack, I'm sure everyone in this uh, room agrees, is, is a cut above. And he's, he's been through the tough times, uh, and he's, he knows the markets, and he knows what makes businesses tick. To have that expertise working for the state of New York is really going to be extraordinary. Let's give him another round of applause, Mr. John Mack. Leslie Watley, the same thing. I sat with Leslie. I talked to her about joining the state on this program. She said, I know nothing about government. And I said, that's a good thing. You're hired. <laughs> because this is not about how government works, right? It's how the business community works. Uh, and, and I know what government does. We need to make it work for business. Uh, and that's exactly what Leslie's about. She knows real estate. She knows real estate from the commercial perspective. Uh, and she's going to make this program work for business rather than making business figure out how to fit in a government context. So I can't thank her enough. Uh, we're excited to have her as part of the team. And Ken Adams on the Empire State Development Corporation, who's just been doing a great job uh, overall. The ESDC has a lot of uh, tools that they can bring to the table. Uh, so I hope you're all familiar with that. And let's give him a round of applause, Ken Adams. You heard it all. Uh, as governor of the state of New York, there's a lot of things this state has to do. There's a lot of good things that we can do and that we are doing. There's a lot of opportunities for us. Uh, and the state is moving in the right direction and it's doing many things that are uh, nationally and internationally um, getting us acclaim. Job one for governor of New York is to make the economy work. Why? Because if the economy is not running, if you're not producing jobs, you can't get to step two. We need the economy running. We need businesses doing well. If the, if the businesses are doing well, that's 60% uh, of the battle right there. Then we're generating tax revenues, then local governments are strong, people have opportunity, people have jobs. So it's all about the economy, and it's all about the private sector economy. And making it run, bringing it to New York, keeping it in New York, and growing it in New York. Now, uh, over the past few years, that's been challenging. Why? First of all, the economy has been challenging overall. Uh, and second, it's been challenging to be a New York company over these past few years. Because New York does not have the uh, reputation, and in reality, it's a tough place to do business. It's an expensive place to do business. It's one of the most expensive places in the country to do business. And that's a problem. Uh, how did we get here? We had uh, what I refer to as a hangover arrogance. We're New Yorkers. Of course business has, has to be in New York. What are they going to do, leave and go somewhere else? Uh, our attitude was there was no place else that a serious business would go to. That was our, our swagger as New Yorkers. Yeah, but what happened over time is there are other places that can go, and we've been talking about mobility, and people will move, and people will shop. And when you are one of the highest tax states in the nation, whether you're 47, 48, 49, 50, uh, people will go to other places. And they have been going to other places. And they've been going to other places with a higher frequency. OK, so we had to reverse the high tax anti-business uh, reputation by actually changing the reality. And that we've done over the past three years. We have been cutting taxes in the state of New York every year for the past three years. Today, every person in this room pays a lower income tax rate than the day before I was elected. Every person in this room. <laughs> Uh, and we're going to be doing more. The way we cut taxes, there's only two ways to cut taxes. You can either increase 
revenues, and because the revenues are increasing, you can actually cut taxes, uh, or you have to cut expenses. We didn't have the luxury of the increasing revenues because, frankly, you guys aren't making enough money, so my percentage wasn't going up uh, fast enough. Uh, because the economy wasn't growing strong enough, we didn't have the revenues, we had to cut expenses. Three years ago, state government spent about 10% more every year, starting on a $130 billion budget. Every local government was spending about 10% more every year. And by the way, we have over 10,000 governments in the state of New York. So we had this annual increase of 10%. Didn't matter what the inflation rate was, didn't matter what incomes were going up, government was spending 10% more every year. We reversed that, and we made the 10% 2%. We spend, we have a 2% voluntary spending cap on the state side, then we passed a property tax cap on local governments at 2%. When we took the, went from 10% more every year to 2%, over three years, that gave us revenues to start actually cutting taxes. That's what we've done, that's what we'll continue to do. You saw in the video, we have a commission set up by, uh, with former Governor George Pataki and former controller Carl McCall. They're gonna to report to me in December for additional tax cut recommendations for next year. So, those arrows will continue to point down. Uh, and we're communicating aggressively to business, give New York another look. It's a different New York than you thought uh, we were. Uh, we are making progress, which is what I think business wants to know more than anything else and what people want to know. They want to know that someone gets it and the arrows are pointed in the right direction. The tax arrow in New York is pointed in the right direction. Um, and the government is working and it's working well, and it's be working better than it has in decades. We now want to take the entire game to a new level, which is what? Well, we want to do something really aggressive on taxes, and we want to jumpstart the parts of the state that are not doing as well. When we talk about the state economy, we talk about it as if it's one. It's not one. It's different regions, it's downstate, it's upstate, and it's different pockets throughout the state. And some are doing extraordinarily well. Manhattan's doing extraordinarily well, New York City. Parts of the other state are not doing nearly as well. So, the parts of the state we want to jumpstart, we're going to focus intensive efforts in those areas. We're then going to get very aggressive on taxes, and that's Startup New York. Zero taxes in targeted zones. The zones are where we want intensive business development. That's the whole program. Zero taxes in the areas that we need it. Call them startup zones. There are 68 across the state. Then we link those areas with higher education facilities. Why? Because that's where the economy is moving. Wherever you talk about the economy moving, and every economic development conference comes down to the same thing, it's higher ed, it's the synergy with higher ed, it was Research Triangle, it's Silicon Valley, it's every hot regional economic development program in the country right now. So we take those geographic areas, we link them with schools, primarily the SUNY system, Chancellor Zimfer's here, State University of New York, they're all across upstate predominantly, but also private colleges, city colleges, um, Eddie, we have some of the best private colleges uh, in the world here in New York. So form the synergy with higher ed, target the geographic area, and zero taxes. Well, how can you do zero taxes? My calculus is this. It doesn't cost me anything because I didn't have those jobs in the first place. And as long as they are new jobs, I didn't have them, I'm not going to be collecting the revenue, but so what? I didn't have it anyway. I have a job, and that job brings a person, maybe a family, and they buy a house, and they go to the grocery store, and they buy a car, and that will run the economy. This has never been done in the state before. Uh, best I know, it's never been done in the country before. I was in the Clinton administration. We ran a program called Empowerment Zones, which is some of the same concepts, targeted geographic areas. But this is uh, everything I've seen before on steroids. And in truth, it takes that great liability of New York, the high taxes, 
and it eliminates it overnight. And John is exactly right. You know, you can't beat zero. That's the one number you can't beat. And I don't care what state you are, where you are, how low cost you are, you can't beat zero. It's property tax, it's sales tax, it's income tax for the employees and the owner. So there is no place less expensive on the map than these zones. And you're in the state of New York. You don't have to move to those other places. So you put those two things together, all the assets of this state, all the assets, plus a zero tax, none of the cost, it is a winning proposition by definition. Sometimes a proposition is so clear uh, that you can't really debate it and it doesn't even take a lot to explain it. It is self-evident. That's why I said to Leslie, this, is, this will sell itself. You just put out those two facts. Zero tax, state of New York, the rest uh, is history because by definition, uh, it will write itself. And it will allow this state to do what it does best, which is just be the state of New York. You know, once you eliminate the liability, now you're going to let the assets rise. Now you're going to let our great uh, higher education system, the best healthcare system on the planet, the most beautiful geography and topography you can imagine, the greatest collection, the most sophisticated urban area, the greatest beaches, the greatest mountain ranges, all in one place. You just let New York shine, you remove the liabilities that we imposed, and you're going to see this state take off. Uh, I genuinely believe it. Uh, it is a, an ambitious undertaking. We have the right talent. We have the right product. Uh, I think it's going to do well for the state. I think it's going to do well for the businesses in this state. I believe it will have an international appeal because there is no place on this planet like New York. You can't find that energy anywhere. You can't find that creativity. You can't find that entrepreneurial energy anywhere. And uh, now we're going to have a market that's really going to take off. I want to thank John Mack once again. I want to thank Leslie Watley for joining the team uh, and for endeavoring to help government, which is always a risky proposition. Uh, but if anyone can do it, they can do it. And once again, applaud the leadership of Ken Adams. And thank you for being here. Again. <laughs> Thank you, Governor.